Hmm. Okay. All right. We're here. <clears throat> Okay, everyone, and so we begin. So welcome everybody. And as usual, you know, we have to say, you know, we have one topic or another, but no matter what the topic is, as all of you know, I will only be saying the same few things with new stories, old stories, but the same things over and over again. And so today's topic, the one that we've picked up to speak on. Okay, let me first mute everybody. Yes, I'm in. Okay, um, so muting everybody. All right. So as we were saying, so as we as we talk today, today the topic is what does oneness look like? You know, what does it feel like to you? And so many a times we've talked about oneness. We've talked about what it is to be in the frequency of the mind and what it is to be in the frequency of the heart. This place operates from separation. This place will make you feel, okay, this is me, this is mine, and this is you, and this is yours. And all the frequencies that we were sitting in, not all of them, but most of the frequencies that we are sitting in when we are unaware, it's always about me and mine and you and yours. And with that, we keep creating more and more separation and experiencing from there. So the more, the more separation we have, the more there will be mistrust, the more anger, the more jealousy, the more sadness and the more lack at not having something, at having less than somebody else. And then we can operate from the frequencies of oneness. And when we recognize that it's a choice, whether we wish to act from separation or we wish to act from oneness, that is a choice. How do we move into, into this place of oneness? I give all of you the answer again and again, simply move into my energies, take energy from me. I operate in the energy of abundance and you too will begin to operate from the same place. It's like there's a huge energy reservoir from where I receive, and now you are receiving from the same place, automatically you will come more and more in oneness. Automatically, you will be able to experience more, more joy as you see things happening around you. Those things don't even have to happen to you. They could be happening to somebody else. But this time, as you operate from oneness, you will find that rather than jealousy as to why they have this and you don't, you will be able to experience the joy that they are experiencing. The joy will be yours in the now. And that's when you are in oneness. But then, you know, we hear all the time, okay, this one is in oneness. We have to love everybody in the entire universe. We have to keep loving everybody. And that's what it is. Our love should flow to all. And now we begin to think that, okay, maybe that's what we need to do. Everyone we meet, we must hug. Everyone we meet, we have to be nice to them. We can't be not nice because that's not what love looks like. And over and over again in this, you know, in this place, in this space, we've talked about the only person that you need to give love to is you. Because everything else around you is simply your reflection, your mirror. No matter what you give to them, if inside you don't have love for yourself, they have no other choice but to reflect your own energy back at you. You can keep trying to love them, but they won't give it back to you. They might for a little bit, but then what is going to be their role? The role is decided by your energy. And so they can't give you love. You cannot receive love from anyone if you already haven't received love from yourself. Consciously, with awareness, you have to love yourself. And for that, the steps are largely to reduce and release your judgments towards yourself. 
I give a tool which I call the wholeness tool, which is to accept yourself as you are. One of the most important tools to come in oneness with anyone. Why is that? Because when we look outside and if we are judging someone, oh, this one hasn't done this, this one needs to be a better person, this person is not, is not doing the right thing. These are all our judgments about somebody else's journey. <clears throat> and as we judge them, who is it that we are really judging? We are simply judging ourselves at all times. There is no other. So we judge ourselves and we judge outside somebody. The more we accept ourselves as we are, the less we judge within and outside as well. And many of you have seen this at work. Whenever you feel very strongly against a wrongdoing by someone, and then you hear from me, there is no wrongdoing, it's the illusion. But from the illusion, you simply have the opportunity right now in this space, you have the opportunity to release your judgment. It's drama, it's an illusion, it's a play. If you are judging somebody saying they are doing wrong, well, let me guarantee it that you've been there and done that. You've been there, done that. You've been everything and everyone. And that's when, when the circle starts to complete, will you come and sit in a place which will talk to you about oneness. If you are sitting over here, listening to this oneness piece, it automatically means that your days of experiencing duality are coming to an end. As you experience duality through the body, this is all that your job is, not just here, but in so many realms, in so many multiverses, as we call it. It's not just one universe. There are so many universes where you exist as energy. You don't know what that energy holds. And simply over here, as you sit and you are hearing about oneness, you wish to come into oneness, you're finding the path towards oneness. It means that you've been there, done that. Those journeys are coming to an end and you are ready to receive from the source the frequencies of the heart. And so in the frequencies of the heart, you do you have to do something? Do you have to go out and give love? Do you have to be a Mother Teresa at all times? Actually, no. Even that, the, the role of Mother Teresa to go out and heal people, to do something to help this one and that one, simply a role that her body had picked up for herself. There is no role that we are tied to. Our roles keep changing. One day we are in the role of a mother. The next minute we could be in the role of a corporate, you know, a corporate going person, an office goer, whatever the role be over there, whether the CEO or the mother or the healer or the guru, all of them roles. We don't have to tie ourselves to any role. If it came, comes up, we pick it up and we do it, but without, you know, without becoming attached to that role. When we don't get attached to a role, then we clear ourselves of all the frequencies of the mind because it's all about attachment, right? You are born in a family. There's a limited people that you are supposed to interact with. You just simply can't go out and interact with others. That's what you chose. And that's how you chose to experience duality. These are experiences you chose. It's not happening to you by chance. Every experience in your life has been carefully, beautifully selected by your energy. And then when we begin to understand we are energy, this is energy, I am energy, you are energy. And that becomes our playground for shifting those energies. Energies shifted and at that point in time, reality shifts. That's the only simple you know, the, the, the most simple equation there is, you shift your energy. When the energy is over here, the consequences that you are receiving of everything that you do is here. You are here in this energy. Let us say this energy is called fear. And you're constantly operating from fear. In this realm of your life, in another part of your life, you are constantly operating in fear. All the consequences 
are construed, are made up from that frequency. Everything around you will play out at this level. And then what happens? As you move your frequency higher, as you move your frequency higher, and now you come from oneness, there is not much fear. You've come to fearlessness. You've recognized that not just you are energy, but everything that's playing out around you is simply a reflection of your energy. If you are all that is playing out, why should you be afraid of yourself? And that's how beautifully everything narrows down just to you. If you are afraid of yourself, then around you will always be fear. If you are no longer afraid of yourself, the universe is playing in your favor and you have nothing to be afraid of. You don't have Corona to be afraid of. You don't have your, you know, somebody who's working for you. He can take something away from me. She can take something away from me. He can take away my name. She can take away my, my wealth. Everything that I have collected can be taken away from me. That's the frequency of fear. The consequences will be from here. As you go into fearlessness and you recognize that the universe is playing in your favor, everything is coming to you with ease and grace. Now your frequency goes higher. You begin to be in gratitude more and more. As you are in more gratitude, will the outcomes be playing out from here? Absolutely not. This is not a vibrational match. The vibrational match will automatically move your reality to another frequency as well. And that's why when I say, don't come from separation. And you'll be like, why not? I need to protect everything that I have created. What if all of this is lost? Well, what if all of this is lost is already coming from the universe will not give me more. The universe is putting an end to whatever it is given to me so far. Everything that I have received, this is the end. The universe will not give me more. And therein is created the separation. Separation from who? Separation from the universe itself. That I will not receive more. I will not get any more. If I retire today, I will not make anything more. I will not receive money. I will die a poor death. Is this how you think forward about your future? Every time we look into the future with unawareness, we are constantly coming from the frequencies of separation. And therefore, growing the mistrust, growing fear, growing our anxieties, growing our worries. When we come into oneness, we are coming into oneness with the entire universe itself. Whatever is needed by me will come to me. And if a cold is needed by me, it will come to me as well. Because even a cold and a cough doesn't happen purposelessly. It happens because there is something that it needs to show you. It's a release. It's a release of something that you are holding. You are releasing not just mucus from your nose and throat. It's something that your body doesn't wish to hold anymore. And so that's the purpose. And so even for something like this, even for something as inconsequential as a cough and a cold, I would say come in oneness with the universe and accept the cough and cold. Accept every dis-ease to your body and be in oneness with, with whatever virus is outside. If the entire universe is playing in your favor, why would the virus be out there to harm you? And as you come into oneness again and again, it's not that you have to go out and take some action. It's not that immediately you have to like rush out and, and be in the company of you know, all the virus that you can find. That's simply an action. If you haven't released your fears immediately, you will face the consequences. This fear frequency hasn't been released yet and you're taking action at this frequency. What is bound to happen? The consequence at this. So even if right now something is the consequence at this level, now in awareness is the opportunity. Let me just mute somebody. In the awareness now is the opportunity for you 
to release it now. So what if you've not released it for the past 500 years? Your fears are now ready to be released and you can start working on oneness right away. I, I had a few stories in the morning, in the morning session, and I'm going to repeat a few because oneness is not, it's, it's most easily seen. The separation is most easily seen in, in frequencies of jealousy, in frequencies of lack. He has so much and I don't have it. Or, you know, he received, but I didn't receive. And when you're sitting in these frequencies, it's easy to figure out that there is separation. What will you do then? I always tell people, as you come into oneness, you will be able to create joy for yourself in this moment. In this moment, as you look at the event unfolding, be in that space. He and I are one. This hand Shiva and that hand Shiva, both hands belong to Shiva. And that is what, there is nothing right. There is nothing wrong. These are simply my judgments and being able to look past those judgments. But sometimes these, these judgments of separation are really, really subtle. And for that, I had a story to, to narrate and it comes to me again. Many years ago, there was this, you know, when, when my journey had just begun and I started to go around and take workshops, um, I went to Delhi, somebody met me, somebody heard me. And then they said, oh my God, can you not see this person? which is me, this woman is out here to control. She just simply wants to be a guru. She wants to form a cult. She wants to control our lives. When she said that, you know, I, I, I heard this news. I mean, I heard what she said about me. The first time something like this had happened. And then as it had happened to me, it had really hurt me that here it is. I want to give you the world. I've got such a beautiful, amazing frequency, and I simply want to share it with you. And here you are, that you are even, you know, so much of mistrust that you, you're not even ready to receive this beautiful gift from the universe. So the first time when it hurt me, of course, I'm the one in separation because I am being hurt by somebody outside. So I simply sat, I knew what I had to do. I released my hurt. As I release my hurt, this hand shiva, this hand shiva, both of us are on our journeys. Nothing is right, nothing is wrong. She said something, that's her journey. I've now, as I worked on myself and come in oneness with her, I removed myself from the outcomes that she was creating. It happens automatically. When you are in oneness with someone, you don't have to care about them. Oh, I'm in oneness with you. You know, I, I have to care for you. I have to do things for you. I have to show in how many ways I love you. No, none of that. When you are in oneness, you simply sit in peace and you give them unconditional love. No matter what your journey looks like, I allow, I accept, and I honor your journey. And so as I did that, I was easy. And yet, you know, the story continued. She came to me another time, another time. She kept coming. There was something that kept calling her to me. And yet there was so much mistrust in her that she couldn't take from me what I was giving away so freely, so readily. One time and yet, and here is where I, my journey was, was also going round and round. And here is where I was not comfortable. When somebody called me their guru, when they said, oh my God, you are my guru. I would immediately get very perturbed. I didn't like the word guru. I didn't like the word that, you know, I didn't like the idea of being a guide, a guru to anybody. And I would constantly remind people, no, no, I'm only a co-traveler. I found this amazing wealth of abundance and it belongs to my energy. I'm simply sharing it with you. I'm not interested in being your guru. And, and you know, constantly when somebody called me a guru, it would trigger me. It would trigger me. I had to look within and see I was actually scared. I was actually fearful of being a guru. And I said, when somebody becomes a guru, you have to live in a certain way. You have to do certain things. You have to have this outer persona. And that doesn't gel with me. I don't wish to be a guru. 
if tomorrow i'm a guru and then people expect that i'll be wearing something different and and you know appearing in front of people looking different i'm not wanting to live that life and so actually i was really fearful of being a guru many a times over through my guidance messages i would receive the message saying you only need to be one person you don't have to have you know two personas you don't have to do anything you just have to be yourself it came slowly and steadily i kept kept working on my fears and i had finally you know i was finally walking through that path being just the person i am and so as i was just you know one face inside and one face outside and yet how beautifully this person tested me so one day she came to me and she had you know she had some health issue it was a very minor issue and yet she she was very perturbed by it she was very upset by it so she came to me and she says you know help me i'll 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 consider that you've got everything you are the right person everything everything but you help me get over this health problem and i said you know what your lesson is in surrender let go of control why are you trying to control something so trivial just let go of it and she wasn't able to let go she was very very attached to her some part of physical being and she wanted that outcome and so as she came to me and i you know whatever answers would come to me in guidance i would give to her but one day and and constantly she would take those answers here's the beautiful part she would take those answers from me and go back to everybody else and say i told you i told you she's out there to control us see i went to her and this is the answer she's given to me this clearly points towards control and everybody would just simply laugh because most of the people understand and work on themselves this is what i teach if something triggers you then the work is on you so everybody whoever would come to me i'd say okay did it trigger you and some people some people would say yes somebody would say no and I, and we'd let it go a few a few days later as i was in the shower i received a response in guidance saying okay here's the thing go tell her go tell her that her entire you know everything that she is looking to cure will be cured all that she has to do is to touch your feet and consider you as you as her guru and as this was said to me in guidance i wouldn't even think of going to her it wasn't even something this triggered me totally on two different aspects first was why is it that i have to be called a guru at all and that too the second piece that too by her she already thinks that i am out there to control why are you giving me this as my first disciple and so i said no 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 and the answer came of course yes 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 and why do these answers come and push you because wherever the work is wherever you are still holding on wherever you are still resistant guidance will show you how to release that resistance but guidance will give you that opportunity whether you will follow the guidance or not but i also tell to people don't i that before you follow the guidance come into equanimity otherwise it doesn't matter it's simply an action if the guidance says give away you know 5000 rupees today and you follow the guidance but in your heart if you are still sitting oh my god i had better use for this 5000 i really could do with this 5000 then you are still sitting in the frequency of fear and from there it will manifest even though you followed the guidance it will it will show you the next step but if you could just come into equanimity with this whatever i am giving so what i am taken care of whatever i am letting go of so what the universe is playing in my favor so in that case too when i had to tell her that look you have to touch my feet and i am going to be your guru and all of this is going to be taken care of and so firstly there was no telling outside something i had to work on myself i had to work very much on myself because i couldn't imagine what her response was going to be so anyways i worked within i released my judgments of what she was going to say blah 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 and about a day and a half later i called her up and i said you know this is the answer that i have received and i told her i said you know you are meant to consider me as your guru and to touch my feet now there is a part that i always do and all of you who ever met me physically you know that 
which is that anytime somebody touches my feet, I simply touch their feet back because I have been made to understand in the guidance that they are touching not your feet, but the divinity that they see in you. As they touch your feet, they can't see their own divinity, but you can see the divinity in them. And so you touch their feet. And so that's constantly something that I do, but she wasn't aware of that. And so as soon as she heard, you know, that she has to touch my feet and she has to consider me her guru. Yes, she has to consider me her guru. She went completely ballistic. And then she was like, no, but you always say the guru is within. Why are you making me touch your feet? Why are you saying this to me? See, I told you. And then she went out to everybody and said, see, I told you she wants to control. And I simply laughed because I'd already done the work but then There was nothing that I needed to work on now. And the conversation stopped right there. And then from that place onwards, I had immediately understood this part that being a guru is simply a role. It's simply a role. It doesn't mean anything at all. I'm the mother today. I'm the janitor tomorrow. And I'm a guru the third day. It doesn't matter. It's a role. And I was able to leave my attachment to it. But it had to be work within. What's her story? Well, she couldn't bring herself to that to that place. And it was really funny because even I told her, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even I didn't want that you should be my disciple because you obviously, you know, you don't believe in this. I don't want you to be my first disciple. And then again, she was very upset because now she was like, why? What's wrong with me? Why can't I be your first disciple? So either way, she wasn't happy. Either way, there was mistrust that she was creating for herself. But for me, my journey of oneness. And here is why the story is being brought to you on this, on this place where we are talking about oneness. Not just was she in separation. I too was in separation. So through her, I got to see the separation that I had created between two Shivas. One pretending to be a disciple and the other pretending to be a guru but I had created separation in those two. And so through her, I got to see the separation that I was operating from and I was able to come into oneness. The work is always within. The work is never outside. The work is not to see whether she considers me anything or not. The work is whether I consider her as a Shiva and myself as a Shiva too. If both are in equanimity, if this is the place where I'm operating from, then it's automatically oneness. Through oneness, we don't, again and again, I point out to people, it's not about doership. It's not about what I need to do for you to come in oneness with you. No, that's not what doership, well, that's what doership is all about, but that's not what oneness is all about. In oneness, you honor the journey as is. Whatever is happening, it is. There is a purpose to it. Maybe I understand the purpose and maybe I don't, but it's okay. I honor your journey and I honor my own. And that's the place of oneness. That's all there is. There is nothing to be done because you don't have to give love. You already are love. Love towards who? Love towards your own self. The rest, everything around, simply your mirrors. In your universe, only your mirrors. They have their own stories running. And if you are able to give them unconditional love, that's what oneness feels like. It feels like blankness when you read stories. So in the morning, somebody asked me today as to, you know, and, and, and here was the topic. And I said, it's always about what's creating triggers in you. If anybody outside is creating a trigger in you, if you are judging somebody for being a vegetarian, being a non-vegetarian, for doing, you know, for doing whatever they are doing for a livelihood, there are so many different ways that we judge people. And the only thing that we need to do is to release judgments towards ourselves. Wow. Okay. I didn't put my phone on silent. If you're judging me, well, release your judgment. <clears throat> so where were we?
as we judge people. So many different places as we judge people, the job is not for us to do something for them. So again, I was talking about the morning story and the story is completely out of my head now. It wasn't meant for you. Oh yes, maybe it was. So we were talking about being a vegetarian, being a non-vegetarian, and then how people will judge whether this is right or this is wrong. And this story had played out within one of us only, Mahinder ji, um, when, he, when he eats anything, when he calls for a dinner, a meal, he's constantly, ever since he found money and the friend in money, he's constantly asking money, okay, what would you like to eat? And what would you like to drink? And it's so beautiful because whatever money says, that becomes the meal for the, for the family. And so one day when Mahindaji wanted to eat something non-vegetarian, he, he didn't invite money. He didn't ask money because he felt, okay, money was a vegetarian. He wouldn't be coming today forward to eat this non-vegetarian food. I have to have it separately. I can't be offering this to money. And then what happened and it was so beautiful because money actually, you know, came, visited Mahindaji in the energies and then asked him, why didn't you call me today? You had this chicken. Why didn't you call me today? And he says, no, but you are vegetarian. So I didn't call you. And Mani said, who am I not? I am everything and everyone. I'm the chicken that you ate. I'm the person who cooked the chicken. I'm the person who brought it to your table. I am everything and everyone. So who am I not? Who are you hiding it from? Who also through you, you yourself are money. So the money is eating money and being with money and cooking with money, no matter who you look at, where is the difference? This hand Shiva, that hand Shiva, where is the difference? And so when we come into oneness with each and everything, if I come into oneness with food, do you have to stop eating food because now I'm in oneness with it? No, whatever the action is, is completely irrelevant, constantly irrelevant. It doesn't matter what action you take, but as you take the action, have you released your judgments towards it or not? And that's all that matters. And so that is why, give me a minute. Can anybody hear this noise in the background? It's faint. Yeah. You it's can't. Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay. I'm going to go out for two minutes and see if I can stop this. Um, there's, there's a lot of construction happening around. Let me see if I can stop it and I'll be back. Oh, well, so much construction happening. Maybe it'll stop, maybe it won't, but it doesn't matter. I've created some white noise of my own, some air conditioning, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so where were we? So yeah, so it's, it's about coming into oneness with whatever you do. As you watch things around you, as you watch everybody around you, do you really need to feel the need to protect somebody, the need to love somebody physically just because you're in oneness with them? Again and again, the answer is no. The answer is simply to recognize that you are here in a role and this role requires this. That's all. Not getting attached to the role that you are in, even when it comes to eating. Okay, your body is requiring something and that's all there is. I'm a vegetarian, but I constantly talk about how okay it is to be eating whatever your body requires. Whatever it is that you wish to do, you can do. But what is it that you have to release in front of all of that? 
before doing anything release your judgment release your guilt those are the ones that keep you in separation judgment guilt all of these are frequencies of the mind as we are in oneness with anything we've been there and done that we've been everything and everyone and today in the energies we are able to accept ourselves fully so the wholeness tool is all about accepting yourself fully as you are when sometimes we look outside and we say they are a thief okay maybe in this life you are not a thief but you've been there you've done that that's to shiva this to shiva this shiva in the role of a thief this shiva in the role of a non thief of a good person of some other values it doesn't matter each of us in and around in this entire universe are the source when we see every place from that oneness of source life just simply flows and that's why i ask you to come into oneness why is it you know why can't we just live in separation life is good i have my you know whatever resources i have i have created for myself why do i need to share them with anybody that i don't know why do i need to have a big heart i'm not comfortable having a big heart and that's okay too what will it do it simply creates experiences at this level the experiences that will come to you when you sit in frequencies of anxiety mistrust and fear these frequencies will only bring more of that and you will find more and more people who will who will appear in front of you and they cannot be trusted they are, they are going to be there the ones who lack the universe is made of everything and everyone only your vibration is what gets pulled into your life and so do you really want to be constantly dealing with thieves and thugs and robbers and murderers probably not if that's the case then change your vibration come from trust and what happens as you come from more and more trust even when murderers come in front of you they will actually be reflecting your vibration today in the morning session somebody asked me saying okay can you please elaborate why in the you know when people when the wild animals sat in front of a buddha or sat in front of you know a mahavir how is it that they were able to let go of their meat eating habits and the answer is so simple because when somebody came in front of buddha buddha is sitting buddha is totally sitting in oneness with them and so what are they going to reflect in front of buddha buddha's energies and buddha sits in oneness with them all that he receives back is the own vibration that he is sitting in and i was laughing in the morning because i said by chance if buddha had this urge i must go and give a lecture to these people that all of these wild animals need to turn vegetarian today if he ever felt the urge to do that then he would have known that the work has come on him because that's all there is if there is a trigger outside the work is within so even on a buddha even in his enlightened state because enlightened state is only for this moment in the now and so as he would have experienced maybe every time somebody ate something in front of him he might have experienced separation but he having understood the energy game he would have brought himself into oneness and when you bring yourself into oneness this frequency of oneness the outside outcomes will be from this frequency and so he doesn't need to say anything he doesn't need to change anyone he is at peace and that peace will be conveyed to him from the entire universe outside and that's exactly the same formula for us the formula doesn't change he was energy we are energy everyone simply energy and the same formula works equally well today whatever our vibration that's what the universe is going to bring back to us so now take a hold of your vibration and that's all that there is okay now let's go through some chats always amazing to hear you and and stopping the wine 
and stopping the wine. I don't understand what and stopping the wine means. You just mentioned that you want to help or you want to love that person at that time. What should be? What should be done? Okay, I forgot to bring my glasses today. What should be done first? I come to oneness as I can do anything for anybody and play my role. Here, can you elaborate, please? You can't do anything for anybody from a frequency of lack that you need to help that person. That's your frequency of lack. Look at this. This is a very subtle play. Because when you see somebody in distress, you're seeing somebody who is sad, you're seeing somebody who is upset, and now you want to help them. Why is it that you want to help them? Are because they are sad? No, it's not the reason why you want to help them. You want to help them because you are resonating at their frequency of sadness. You are resonating at their frequency of helplessness. And so now you wish to help them. In the body, you might help somebody. If somebody needs something, and, and I used to be this person, I've, I've witnessed this in my own life. I used to be this person who constantly wanted to help others. I constantly came from this energy of, oh, I need to help someone. I need to help people. And I can't do enough. No matter what I do, it's not enough. So majorly, I was coming from the frequency of helplessness. And for that, no matter how much money I made, if I found somebody who was in need, I would quickly just simply give them the money. Guess what was happening more and more? I kept finding people who were more in need and more in need. That's the frequency I'm resonating at. So when you look at somebody, I constantly only give you one question. I don't have a second question. That one question is, what am I feeling? Because when you look at somebody in sadness, what are you feeling? Are you feeling calm? Are you feeling peaceful? So Asha, this question is to you. When you look at somebody who is sad, are you feeling calm? Are you feeling peaceful? I think Asha asked me that question, so I'm not really sure. Yeah, Asha did. Yeah, yeah, I asked you. Yes, Asha. So tell me. When, when you see somebody that you want to help them, you want to help them. You see somebody who is sad, somebody is going through problems, you want to help them. As you look at them, are you feeling completely calm and peaceful? Not always. Yeah. So when you are not feeling calm, when you are not feeling peaceful, then the work has come on you. Then the work has come on you. That's all. The work is always within. Because you have to bring yourself to that state of calm because it is your sadness that is showing you the sadness that is around. Really, it's just that you are resonating with somebody else's. You've come into oneness with their sadness. You've come into oneness, but it's with their sadness. And you want to bring them to joy. You want to bring them to joy. You want that they should come into oneness with your joy. But you're not sitting in joy. You have tuned into sadness. You are sitting in their energies of sadness. And so when we understand the game from the energy's perspective, we cannot bring somebody to joy if we are not transmitters of joy. We have to be in joy within. And that's the only time that somebody can, can tune into our joy and somebody can come into our place of peace. So many people call me all the time. So many. In a week, there are so many people who call me. And they say to me, they say to me, oh, you know, I'm feeling very suicidal. Can you help me? Can you do anything? No matter what the words are, no matter what words I use to talk to them, I'm constantly watching within. Am I completely at peace? If he was to go right now and commit suicide the next moment, am I at peace? If I can feel that peace within, that's all that is needed from me. Because as I am in peace, that person has the opportunity to tune into, to come into oneness with my peace. But what if I hear the story? 
oh my god they want to commit suicide oh my god i hope that doesn't happen he's the only son of you know these old parents whatever he cannot commit suicide now where am i coming from i'm coming from worry and anxiety no matter what words i use no matter what i say to them what is the energy that i am sending across to them it's more worry more sadness more anxiety so the minute i have lost my center of peace of joy within i cannot be giving joy to anybody else so you say what can i do to help that other person what you can do is to recognize that they are shiva on their own journey you are shiva on your own journey firstly they are shiva they are already shiva they are on their journey and if they need help it will automatically happen what can i do that doership can simply be released if you have a role it will happen automatically but you have to you have to constantly be in that place of peace and calm because in that role play you can give them thousands of rupees hundreds and thousands of rupees hundreds and thousands of dollars it doesn't matter because whatever you are giving in the physical is just 1% what you are communicating to them in the energy that's the 99% so you give them money in the in the physicality but it's loaded with oh my god i hope this can help them now what is the energy behind this money the energy is of worry it's of fear it's of anxiety so what is your 99% giving to them as a gift it's giving energies of worry and anxiety what are you handing over to them in your hand yeah that's the body handing over some pieces of paper and that's all that there is the 1% is only about this you know what you handle in the manifested space but what is happening in the energy that is where aware people have to keep looking in or rather aware people keep checking in with that one question what am i feeling and so what is it that you have to do again i answer that question for you nothing you have to do nothing from this space no matter what you do you are giving them constantly more energies of worry more energies of anxiety is that really what you want to give them or do you want to give them peace and love and joy if you want to give them peace and love and joy then firstly you have to come to that space of complete peace and love and joy and how to come to that space by recognizing each of us around here are on our journey no matter what the experiences outside are every experience through that illusion people are choosing their energies are choosing to receive experiences you are choosing yours your energy is choosing yours and so their energy is choosing their experience how can you change their energy by being in peace they have the chance to come into oneness with you when you are at peace they have the chance to come to peace if you are in anxiety and worry they have the chance to come into anxiety and worry and that would be their oneness with you so when we talk about awareness and then in awareness we talk about oneness it's always to take you into a frequency of masti into the frequency of abundance and that's where aware oneness is all about thank you mira yeah. i look <laughs> so here is parul coming into oneness saying i look so cute and adorable in this blue dress and the red mala yes parul you really look so cute okay should i then candle the sadness asked sweena yes of course because it's your sadness and then you wish to change your energy first and then whatever your energy be is it's constantly being transmitted we are not just this body this this limited body we are receivers and transmitters of energy at all times we are energy everything in this universe is energy just because we can't see it our awareness doesn't go on to it you know immediately but now we are teaching you how to be how to be aware of what energy 
you are operating from. Is that non-acceptance of that moment? Okay. Um, Meenal, amazing clarity on karta bhav. Yes, please. So karta bhav is constantly, you know, it comes, even the doership, it comes from a lot of responsibility. Every time we want to do something, we feel the responsibility, even if we feel the responsibility to change the world. And so I constantly remind people there is nothing to be changed. The world is completely operating in perfection. The world has a purpose. Everybody over here is coming for experiences. Earth is not the only place where we exist, but to earth we come so that we can experience duality. And when the duality lessons are about to be over, then we start to understand little bit by bit about oneness. But as we understand oneness, it's not about doing, it's about observing. Just observing ourselves, being in the place of calm will automatically shift the world because that's the energy now that you are transmitting around you. And so that energy will change the world. More and more people will come and yet, no outcome that I need to change the world. No. If it happens, it's in perfection. If it doesn't happen, that too, in perfection. Are you at peace with this sentence or do you get triggered? No, no, this needs to change. This cannot continue like this. Well, then the work has come on you. Whatever it is that you wish to change, look at it. There is judgment. There is separation between you and that other person or any event as well. And so we change, we change ourselves. Everything around us changes. Any other questions for now? All good, everybody looking good. I don't see any more chat questions. Bye. Uh, bye. I mean, bye, Duan. Yes, just a second. Let me just read this also. By duality, do you mean the concept of you know what? I am an investment banker. Uh, by duality, I mean me and you. That's what I mean by duality. We came here to experience the separation. And that's dual. You and I are not the same. You and I are different. You and I are having different experiences. This belongs to me. That doesn't belong to me. And from that, the dwet and adwet or whatever those words are in spirituality, they automatically follow. They automatically follow. It's all about the same. Are you understanding yourself as being the source? Are you understanding for the other to be the source as well? If the both of them are source, then that's all that is needed for you to come into oneness. Otherwise, you will keep experiencing duality. Duality exists in everything. It's two sides of the coin. So when I say right and wrong, that's duality. When I say I and you, that's duality. Everything that has two, that is not one. Everything is two, everything is more. Everything is duality. So wherever there are judgments, in each judgment, there is duality. Because this is right, this is wrong, this is white, this is black. This is duality. So, so that's what I understand by the word duality. Okay, wonderful. All right, everyone. And now I think the voice, the noises have died. So we can switch it off. Any questions, anybody else? Or we can do that little, little bit of little bit of meditation. Somebody was asking me and I told them to, to, uh, to wait for a bit. Who was that? Who was asking me a question? They started with Meenal. Yeah, that was me, Meena, Suman. Yeah, hi, Suman. Okay, I see you've written something. Hi. Yeah, yeah, I, I still have my video off. And um, that was not a question. Um, okay. I was, I've just read, also wrote that on yes, the chat yeah. that, yeah. So I was literally, you know, feeling sick last an hour back, uh, reading Afghanistan news, really silly, feeling sick in Mustafa. Yes. Thank you so much for saying what you are saying. You know, it's really giving me some peace right now. Thank you so much. Wonderful. And you have to understand that everything that we judge outside, whether it's the victim or the perpetrator, we've been there 
we've been through it all we've done that it's you know there is nothing that is separate from us they too are shiva they are here for the experience and whatever that experience is they're not stuck there it's an experience everything is simply an experience it has no other value you know the whole the whole universe being energy energy is not static it is dynamic and so the whole universe is constantly playing and receiving higher frequencies of everything higher frequencies not just of joy and not just of you know um, anand and 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 love and bliss but highest frequencies of fear sadness anxiety and the whole universe is constantly moving in its frequencies through this well cumulative conscious or unconscious effort so when we are unconscious what are the energies that we grow maximum what frequencies do we grow so much we grow sadness we grow separation we grow our you know we grow anxieties worries fears lack when we become more and more aware now with awareness we grow more abundance we grow more love we grow more joy we grow more unconditional and so what is happening through all of this collective consciousness the earth's frequencies simply keep moving up and that's how dynamic the whole play of energy is at all times so they're doing their play and we are doing ours when you go to watch a movie there are all different kinds of movies out there and there is an audience for each kind of a movie so you have to understand and be the audience you be you have to be the observer otherwise we become and i constantly use the same words but it is this we become the krishna or we become the arjun that is the only choice that we have and so when we are aware we can be the krishna standing in the middle of a battlefield and yet being at the place of calm knowing that the calm that we hold in this moment is already being transmitted it is being transmitted but then the more we sit in worry and fear and anxiety and sadness well now we are the arjun and even that is being constantly relayed out to the universe so as we if we wish to change something in the world without really wanting to change anything all that we need to do is to be in the energy of joy and so find your joy something some place whatever gives you joy do that and be in joy it's that simple by just doing things that you enjoy you're actually helping the world isn't that funny thank you so much we keep on forgetting that <laughs> yes wonder you yeah. yeah okay uh me you operate from compassion and share your frequency with us why do we then say there is no right and no wrong me you operate from compassion what nonsense who said i operate from compassion a zero compassion compassion too is separation i have to have pity for you compassion is is just a nicer subtler word for pity that do i need to help you and that's what i operate from masti you forget every time that i share my masti with you and you all come back to me reporting how much more masti you are having you know that's happening in your life every day i'm receiving messages from each of you oh i'm having such a beautiful shift i'm having such a good time i operate from that masti i'm growing the masti i don't care for compassion compassion according to me is to understand that somebody else is not shiva is not shiva so you know you say i operate from compassion that's your that's your view of what i do but i am not in that place i follow guidance i simply follow guidance now there used to be a time when i was in a lot of compassion and that's what i talked about that you know when i was in compassion every time who was i meeting i was constantly meeting people who were helpless constantly because here i was trying to be helpful so who is going to be coming more and more to me those people you know with the saddest of stories were coming more and more to me and then finally when i came into you know into understanding i mean all of these you know that my journey started towards awareness and i understood that no matter what i did the energy that i was putting behind the energy that i was putting behind each of my actions was simply that of helplessness 
that I need to be more, I need to do more, I need to be more. I need to be able to help. Okay, I helped 5,000 people this time. I need to be able to help 10,000 now. And so what would happen? Those 10,000 would keep appearing because that's what my frequency is, is bringing to me. And now what do I do? I give away. Yes. And if you think that giving away things is part of the compassion, let me tell you, I don't operate from any compassion at all. You can come and ask me for five rupees. And if the guidance says no, I won't give you those five rupees. And if the guidance says, okay, give 10 crores to this person. And if the guidance has said it, I will sit, look within, look at my emotion. And you all know that I've already done it. So that's what, but it was simply following guidance. Did I make, you know, was it a conscious effort? Oh, this person's life is not looking good. I need to help them. Nope, absolutely not. As a matter of fact, when money said to me that, you know, give this house to this person, that house that was in our name, and they said, okay, just give it as a gift to this person. Many other people got upset because they said, no, that person isn't as deserving as so many others we know. And I said, I don't even care about who's deserving or not. Guidance came saying this house to this person, you give it away. My job was to look within to see what all emotions I'm feeling. Am I feeling the judgment? I didn't feel the judgment, but I was feeling not towards that person, but I was feeling judgment about what my husband is going to say. And so I had to release that judgment. Compassion, no. Guidance, yes. So I follow guidance. I constantly follow guidance, but I also remind everybody that before I follow guidance, I come into equanimity. I always come into equanimity before, before the act, because action doesn't matter. If the action is done with fears, I'm giving away the house. What will happen now? What will happen to me when we retire? Then the outcomes will be from this space. But if I come into equanimity, come into oneness with that person, who am I giving the house to? This Shiva, this Shiva. One hand giving to another hand of Shiva. Where's the difference? What am I doing? Nothing. I'm just having fun. I'm participating in a story. But as I participate, I'm in Masti. I'm not in compassion. I'm saying, how can you have compassion for one hand over another? Can you? It's just ridiculous. Both are my hands. How can I be more compassionate towards my left hand and not towards my right one? Does it even make sense? No, it doesn't. And that's how energy flows. And that's how when you become aware, you understand there is no other. There is nobody outside. There is simply you in many different shapes and forms. Do you have to do something for each one of them? Absolutely not. You have to do nothing. You have to sit in peace. You have to sit and come. And then someday a guidance will flow saying, do this. Okay, that's work for you. Take a look within. Do it. Otherwise, sit in your calm, sit in your peace, and you're already doing way more than what you can even imagine. That oneness, that, that frequency is already doing its job. You don't understand it because you can't see it tangibly. You don't get certificates for it, but it's doing way more than what you can do by trying to help people, by trying to manifest something for the other. Okay, people, did I answer your question, Ruchi? Zero compassion. Thank you so much, Sri. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's funny because you know this this took a long, long time understanding because compassion is such a sexy word. We really, you know, like, oh, we need to be compassionate, we need to do for the world, we need to be do-gooders or some such thing like that. And when I was told compassion into the fire and then I couldn't understand that part because it's easy for to us to understand when somebody says okay the thorns into the fire but when somebody says the rose into the fire then we can't understand it so for me also can I the... ask yeah, yeah go ahead sorry it's a related question um, basically me I cannot imagine you ever deliberately harming anyone no matter what you say i can't imagine you so why i mean when you say there's no right and wrong sometimes i'm not able to assimilate it fully uh i'm not able to wait wait if you can't imagine 
me doing something um, purposely or some such thing like that um, to somebody, then that's your limited imagination. It's got nothing to do with me. But wa- I, you always teach us oneness. Oneness is a message of love, right? I mean, yes, I teach you oneness when now when I've come into awareness, you should go and talk to people when I was the investment banker. When when something would happen, you know, if my team didn't do something right. And then if a client said something, oh, in front of the client, I'd save that person's ass. But then I'd save that ass so that I could come and thrash them. I was that person. Everybody, you think you people are, you know, are afraid of my danda right now? The danda that I give right now, it's, it, it comes from a lot of love because I have zero interest in what I say in the words that come out of my mouth. But you are meeting me when I'm in awareness. You don't know the journey I've traveled. And that's where I keep telling you stories because my only story is if I can make this journey, anybody else can. You know, I, I, I was constantly surprised at, you know, really, I mean, I'm starting to receive these messages. I'm, uh, and I used to be this person. People were scared, grown people. I'll, I'll send you a video which was made by my team. My team loved me for sure. Because that love is constantly a reflection of the love that I've always carried for myself. So I had huge amounts of self-love. And from that space, everybody who met me, my clients loved me, my team loved me. But that video that they made, you know, it's, it's all about how many grown men I, I, I made them cry. I'm very proud of it, by the way. So anyways, and I did that all in deliberation because they didn't do exactly what I wanted to be done. So that's it. That's the, you know, that's who I was. And I still don't care when something happens. But now, but earlier, there was a difference. I was angry outside and I was angry inside. Now, when I scream at people, I'm angry outside. I have zero anger inside. I don't care. I am at peace inside. I literally, and that's what I say right now, coming into oneness is not being completely carefree, being completely carefree. I don't care. And when, you know, when I say to somebody, I don't care about you, then, you know, now if you are going to think, oh, I need to care about you or what a, you know, what a non-caring person or whatever, that's your imagination. I don't care because I'm totally sitting in love. But that love is for myself. And from that space, everything already happens. You receive, you receive love from me. It's not because I have to go and give love to you. Oh, I care so much for you. I love you. That's not love. That's your limited perception of love. Unconditional doesn't look like, you know, like the the way that you bind it. I've got to experience it. I've got to express it. I've got to tell it. No, it doesn't. It's already received. It's already received. And what do I receive from all of you? How many of you write to me every single day to say, Meenal, I love you? How many of you? Where is that coming from? You all are my reflection. That's all. So the only person that you really need to love is yourself. Come in oneness with yourself. Do the wholeness tool. Be in oneness with yourself. And that's all. If you are right about something, you've also been wrong about something. If you can't accept those two parts of you, you are still judging yourself. There's nobody outside. There is nobody outside right or wrong. You are just constantly judging yourself. You can't accept yourself as being the creator, the Shiva. I can't imagine Shiva ever doing something purposefully wrong. Of course, Shiva would get angry and then Kamdev ko bhasma kar diya. Kar diya. Kar lo jo karna hai. So that's how it is, because there is nothing. This and this, both hands are Shiva. Right and wrong, both hands are Shiva. If you are not able to accept something as wrong and then say, okay, I might have been there, I might have done this, you are simply judging yourself. You need to work on your own judgments and how much you limit yourself with your judgments. That's all. That's the work on you. And so keep doing it. Every place will keep showing you. When you judge yourself, the outside world will show you as our judgments. That's all the work there is. Came, come in oneness and then
come in oneness and then fit into all sizes of clothes too. Yeah, that's the story of Kanti. Yeah. So anyway, so as we were talking, the right or wrong, it's acceptance of yourself. Go and do the wholeness too. Yeah, Asha, you have a question. Asha, your hand is up. Do you have a question? Or was it the hand up from the previous time? No, no, I have a question. I have unmuted myself. Yes, yes, go ahead. Ah, okay. You, just now you mentioned that, uh, uh, you know, when, what question I wanted to ask that also. <laughs> uh, you want to, uh, what was it? I one. I've already given you the way to ask me in the energies. How many times do you sit in the guidance and ask in the energies? I don't know. I don't count. Okay. Fine. Yes. Whenever you remember the question, you can ask. I, you know, I, whenever I have question, I just think of I'm in L and some solution just comes. Joy come. I think, I think of you as the energy of Masti. Yes. So the answer comes now. So even right now, if you can't remember the question, where's the problem? Yeah. When you remember it, and then you'll say, I'm Meenal, and you'll receive the answer. That's all that is needed. That's all that is needed. Yeah. We come here for more Masti. It's not like if I don't give you the answer, you won't get the answer. You <laughs> all have the access to the frequencies. So you can just sit in the frequency, receive your answer, and it will be done. Yes. Okay, everyone, just a cute little meditation for today. So take a deep breath in. And this is to bring you into oneness with the food and the what you eat, what you drink, and all of that. So just simply coming into oneness with that. So all of us... I did of, remember my question. Can I ask? Yeah, ask. Uh, whenever uh, anything happens uh, to you and whatever you have done in past or whatever is happening just now, I always feel that that is a judgment for myself. Is this a judgment for myself? So what is your so this is a thought. So now with the thought, what is your emotion? I don't ask what are your thoughts. Thoughts can be hazard. Uh, I should wear green today, I should wear red today, I should eat mithai today. These are all thoughts. But from the thought, what is your emotion? I just simply tell you, you ah, take each ah. time, each time I give you this one question. The question hasn't changed. What is the question? The question is, what am I feeling now? Correct. So, kuch ye thought aata hai. don't give me thoughts. Jab wo thought aata hai, add that thought, what is your emotion? I, I feel that I can't do anything for whatever is happening. Nothing okay. is in my hand. So, nothing is in your hand is a helplessness emotion. Okay. You're feeling helpless. I can't do anything to change it. So, release so, your helplessness. Okay. As simple as that. You yes. are giving me the answer. You are giving me the answer. I feel I can't do anything. I feel helpless. Okay, then release your helplessness. So is it That's a judgment? Is this a judgment for myself? Everything is a judgment. Every thought of ours is a judgment. Okay, thank you. Got it. Every thought is a judgment. If we are going to judge ourselves as being not good enough, that's a judgment. If we are going to judge ourselves as being the best, that is a judgment. And that's when I say, if we are going to do judgments all the time, at least let's judge ourselves in a way that suits us, in a way that makes us feel good. Why should we judge ourselves in a way that doesn't make us feel good? But that's what you always do. And then that's, here, that's what we are out here to change. If you have to judge yourself, then at least say I'm awesome. Why do you say I'm you know, I'm crap, I'm bakwas, I'm, I'm the dirty person. That is why I'm deserving these bad things to happen to me. Why judge yourself in that way? At least judge yourself nicer. Okay, everybody. <clears throat> Take a deep breath in. And exhale through the mouth. 
And as you exhale through the mouth, going completely empty, empty, empty of all thought, empty of all emotions in this moment, empty. And now, as you think, think of your favorite foods in front of you. If you are non-vegetarian, then think of something non-veg in front of you. It's your favorite food. If you are vegetarian, then this is what I want you to think. Think of all the microbes that you are consuming right now as you open your mouth. So open your mouth and exhale, inhale. But as you do that, do you even know how many, how many living organisms you are actually inhaling and exhaling? And so think of all of this, no matter what you're thinking of now, now come into oneness. You are everything. You are all that you eat. You are all that you consume. Living, non-living, empty air, air filled with organisms. No matter what it is, you are all. Understand these words and the vibration behind these words. It's not about what you eat. It's about your oneness, your oneness with everything that you eat. I am one with all that I eat. I am one, no separation. Everything that I eat is for me, for my pleasure. All that I consume is for my pleasure. And so thank you for all that I eat. Thank you to all that make it to my table, whether the plant or the animal, it doesn't matter. The body eats and the body receives joy. If the body receives guilt from eating, then in this moment, as you exhale, Simply release the guilt. Release the guilt. You are here in this earth, in this place, in this role. And many will die from your hands. Some you don't even realize. And they die from your hands. Some organisms here and there, it doesn't matter. They were to die anyways. And it was your role to bring them to their end. And so any guilt that you feel towards anything, any of your actions, simply release right now and be guilt-free. Exhale the guilt. Inhale love and oneness. In the energy of Meenal, inhaling love. In the energy of me, inhaling oneness. I am one with all that I consume. And now, anything that you drink, your favorite beverage, the one that you love, simply bring it to your mind. And as you're thinking about your favorite beverage, all that you love about it, simply thank. Thank it for being there. Thank it for being in your life. And now, as you think of another beverage, something that you might be fearful of, you think it's not good. Somebody else drinks it, it's not good. Somebody else might be not benefiting. This is dangerous. They shouldn't be drinking this. All of these fears that you experience at a beverage, simply exhale. I am in oneness with all that I drink. 
I am in oneness with all the beverages, every liquid that exists. I am in oneness with Amrut. I am in oneness with poison, wish. I am in oneness. Understand the vibration because this is who you are. You are wish and you are Amrit too. And in this moment, accepting yourself as you are. I accept myself as both. I am. I am. And that's it. Exhale, fear, guilt, whatever it is that you might be feeling till you feel the sense of calmness. Food, no longer a trigger. Drink, no longer a trigger. The air around you, everything that it carries, all the airborne diseases, the pollution, everything that you think is harmful for you. All of these fears of the air being harmful for you, as you take the next breath in, in the frequency of abundance, the next breath out, release the fears. Just simply release the fears. All that is, simply is. The air, it carries everything. It comes to you. And now you are in thankfulness for the air. As is, as it is. <sighs> Finding yourself to be lighter less fearful, more joyous in Anand, taking in the frequency of Meena. Whatever you eat, whatever you drink, all is for you, for your enjoyment. It's for your enjoyment. Simply come into oneness and be here. Be here, oneness with the universe. Oh my. To come into oneness, we are enough aware that we find friction outside. We release that friction. We have many of these tools to release the friction, to release the sadness, to release the expectation. But many a times we forget how in each of these places we create separation from air, from food, from water, from drink. We create separation. And so today, just simply being in oneness. Oneness with the universe all around you. Oh, money, enjoy. Okay, people, lots of love.